Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't booby. I mean, uh, boobies with the booby boobies with the booby booby boobies. Yeah, today's film is Barbed Wire. Now, uh, you remember hearing about this? The Pamela Anderson comic book movie about a superhero who also happens to be a stripper? It's just like that god-awful cartoon she starred in, Stripperella. You know, that had the exact same premise of a superhero stripper? <laughs> Except where Stripperella was a horrible piece of horseshit, Barbed Wire is... There is no difference between Barbed Wire and Stripperella. It's blatant, it's stupid, and the only reason it exists is because Pamela Anderson has boobies. Large, 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 large boobies. <laughs> and if for some reason you forgot that, the film reminds you constantly. Don't believe me? Let's dive right into the shitstorm and find out why this film is so bad. Okay, let's take a look at our very first opening scene. Yeah, you starting to see why this movie was made? Brother, your sister, and your mama tell We're about to go down and you know just what to do Oh, I forgot to mention, there's also a boring backstory read off by the narrator. The old democracy is overthrown by a tyrannical new group called the Congressional Directorate. Every city in the nation is under martial law, except for... Every city in the nation is under martial law, except one, Steel Harbor, the last free city. A secluded island of extreme independence, it is a place marked by chaos and crime, providing a home for a new kind of mercenary. Blah blah blah, the future sucks. Boobies! I wonder if anyone's even reading the credits right now. Oh wow, the music was done by Bush In fact, I wouldn't be shocked if they just added credits just to keep this scene going longer. Just when you're praying the whole movie is nothing but this, the plot sadly rears its ugly head. Oh, I know, I know, just try to get it over with. So our hero, Barb Wire, lives in a festering hellhole known as Steel Harbor, which takes place in the apocalyptic world of 2017. I guess Obama wasn't the change we needed. We see her working at a strip club as she entertains the owner, who I swear is a mix between Peter Laurie and the Fantasy Island guy. What are you doing here? I'm looking for a light. Got one. <laughs> I don't smoke. <laughs> Neither do I. I only smoke when I star in something horrible. So it turns out she's a bounty hunter who's sent into the strip club to save a kidnapped girl. Who are you? I'm the one who's getting you out of here. Trust me. We're trapped. Oh. We better make out. Oh. Oh. What are you doing? Ever see Batman? That depends whether or not he's affiliated with the comic this movie is based off of. Shut up. God damn it. As you can see, Pamela Anderson is the Shaquille O'Neal of acting. Shut up. God damn it. Shit. Come on. I'm angry. Really. So she gets the girl to her parents who plan to pay her handsomely, but there's one little problem. Cut the shit. Where's my money? I could only come up with half the money. Fine. I'll take half your daughter. Yeah. What? So they make a deal by trading their car for the rest of the money, as Miss Wire has a monologue about why things are the way they are. It was the middle of the second American Civil War, the worst year of my life. Where all I knew how to do was pose on top of cars. Port Steel Harbor. What a shithole. Meanwhile, we cut to... Uh, 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 Why don't we start uh, again? Whose sexual psyche do we just dive into? Uh, uh, now, where's Dr. Karina Devonshire? And please answer in the most titillating way possible. I told you. I abhor torture. 
But your words just don't match your thoughts. Should I be watching this? Okay, movie, you clearly have some sexual issues. Uh, tell me, when did these fantasies of torture enter your mind? Well, I think it was when my mom first took me to a strip club. So the bad guy doing all the torturing is known as Colonel Prizer, and he's out to find a scientist named Dr. Cora D. Apparently, she devised some sort of contact lenses that can protect your identity so the government can't track you. This will prove useful to a resistance that is fighting against this fascist government that is currently taking over the world. But enough of that bullshit, here's some more tips. So Barb is not only a stripper slash bounty hunter, but also owns a strip club called Hammerhead. Just look at those futuristic dance moves. We also come across Barb's blind brother named Charlie, who I guess hangs out there quite often. Chanel number five. Am I correct? Yes, you are. When I smelled it, I thought to myself, Charlie, now this is obviously a woman of significant breeding. And then I thought, I wonder if she'd like to do some. Breeding, that is. You like that pickup line? I got it from Guidepost. In Braille, of course. Meanwhile, just outside the club, Dr. Cora D and her husband named Axel get stuck at a roadblock. Look, we just stick with the plan, okay? Change of plans. <laughs> Well, they finally did it. They killed my fucking car. So even though we never see them exit the vehicle and they have nowhere to go, they somehow escape. After that, we see Barb exit the strip club on her way to another job, as she makes her way to another monologue. I had to do a little moonlighting to keep my bar running. Not an easy life. A girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. Come on, this isn't an apocalyptic future. It's Amsterdam. You see the stuff outside of toy stores. So she plays herself off as a hooker, which, let's face it, is not very hard, and she gets herself into the room next door to another person she's supposed to bring in called Krebs. Ooh. Why don't you go change into something a little more comfortable? How about something a little less comfortable? Oh, it's the lost dude, Pervy. Nuggy, 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 nuggy. Did you wash your hands? No. I was bad. Oh, how'd you know being knocked out was my fetish? So she bursts into the room next door and shoots up a bunch of bad. You're my last bill, Jumper Krebs. Wake up, sunshine. That was nice kicking. You really know your stuff, babe. What did you call me? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, she hates to be called babe. Now slut, hooker, bitch, whore, those are okay. But if you call her babe, that's just sexist. Don't call me babe. Oh, maybe I should have actually attacked her with the knife instead of just standing here. So Barb is also friends with the head of police named Willis, who will often look the other way to her illegal doings as long as he's well compensated. And I do mean well compensated. Hmm, of course not. Oh. That's sexual harassment, Chief. And I do have to take it. Listen, Barbara Kapetsky. We could play this little cat and mouse game all night long, but I have more important things on my mind. Like, how the hell do I get out of this piece of shit movie? We then cut to this rather unnecessary moment where some drunk guy tries to get into the club during the day. Just give me my drink. Sir, we're not open yet. I think you've had enough already. Ah, blow me. Okay, don't blow him. <laughs> God, get her off! Get her off of me! That's Camille. Gives new meaning to the term fetch the balls. Camille outside. Well, enough of that pointless scene. More boobies. But the strip show will have to wait as the club is infiltrated by. M. Bison's twin brother. Of course! 
If Cordy escapes, I will personally rip your heart out of your ass and stuff it back down your throat. That doesn't make any sense. I will personally rip your heart out of your ass. Right after I rip your lungs from your ears and shove them back in through your nose. So they talk with Barb to see if she knows the whereabouts of Dr. Cora D. Well, I guess it's hard to find somebody unless you know what she looks like. Her present appearance is of no consequence. Identification can always be made by retinal scanning. So. Hey, I want an obnoxious close-up too. Excuse me, boss. Trouble in the kitchen. So it turns out Cora D enters at the exact same time the Colonel does. But that doesn't get Barb's attention. What gets her attention is Cora's husband, Axel, who used to be Barb's lover. And I never wanted to hurt you. And now's not the time to explain. We're three years late, Axel. Get out. Don't come back. Wait a minute. Let me recap this. A fascist government is looking for a scientist and spouse working for a resistance who takes shelter in a bar under management by the spouse's ex-lover and a corrupted cop? Hmm. Now where have I heard that before? Casablanca! I mean... Wow, there's like no difference. The plot is literally just Casablanca. Why? Why rip off Casablanca? Did you really think that nobody would notice? Did you think that arguably the most famous romance film of all time was so low on the radar that no one would make the connection? Granted, the titties were a good distraction, but they can only hide so much. I mean, what would Humphrey Bogart have to say about this? All the film flubs and all the cinema and all the world, she had to rip off mine. Cockchucking bitch. So, okay, returning to Casablanca 2, here's looking at you, slut. We see Axel talk with Charlie before he confronts Barb. Where's Barb? I don't think talking to Barb's gonna be such a good idea. Too late. Three, two, Hello, Barb. one. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I'll do my ABCs. So Barb turns them away, but Charlie leads them to the center of the resistance, led by a woman named Spike. The Congressionals took the lenses, they did this? No, the Congressionals are still looking for Chris, you know that for sure. Willis and the local cops don't know squad either. One too many Winston cigarettes, the Flintstones lied to me. Meanwhile, the Colonel and gang continue their search as they burst into a bail bond service to get some answers. You're all under arrest. We needed to make an interrogation. Sorry, sir, they resisted. They dared to ask us what's going on! So they read the minds of one of the dead men, however the hell that works, as they believe the answer may lie in Barb Wire's club. Meanwhile, we cut back to Barb as she- Alright, you know what this is? This is Centerfold the movie. You can take every other scene in this film and just put it on an issue of Hustler. Anything I wasn't prepared for was running into you. You'll get over it. So Axel tries to win Barb over, but finds she's one stubborn female who's gonna tough it all out. Or not. Am I interrupting something? Oh, uh, not now, honey. Hi! Hi! Um, uh, I was just making sure her mouth wasn't bugged. <laughs> uh, Bob, this is my wife, Cora D. How impressive. I'm sure you'll have very strong, smart children. If they stay out of future sequels, they will be. I was just better left a part of your past. Oh, so that's why I didn't get an invitation to your wedding. Uh, Bob, there's more to this story than meets the eye. The Autobots rage their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. But they're again interrupted by the Colonel and his crew. I think this guy's only job is to walk into buildings dramatically. Who are they? I pick them up off the boulevard. I like a good menage every now and then. Scan them. Luckily, Charlie has some sort of machine messer upper thingy that stops the ID machine from identifying them. <laughs> Sir, the scanner's broken, sir. You're wasting my time. Get out! <laughs> hey, boss, you know what would be really funny? If they were the people we were looking for. You know, like, the one time our scanner machine doesn't work, and it was the time that we actually found them, and we just let them go. <laughs> and we would look so stupid. <laughs> 
but that'd be ridiculous. So the soldiers decide to search the area thoroughly. Actually, maybe a little too thoroughly. Yes, yes, make sure they're not hiding in the martini glasses. I wish you could see this mess. I couldn't see when it was clean. But Charlie has a little surprise. What the hell were they looking for anyway? Stupid contact lenses. Like these? We can give them to Axel and help them escape. Not so fast. This is our ticket to Europe. Hey, they don't belong to us. Find his keepers. You're making a mistake, Barb. It's not just about money, you know. I knew Charlie was still friendly with Don't monologue systems. around me, I'm still here. I oh, I also forgot to mention, this film has a fetish for cutting to black and fading back in. I keep thinking every time they're gonna fade to black, something goofy is gonna suddenly appear. So she takes the context to a crime overlord simply called Mr. Big Fatso. I'm guessing they call him that because he likes Dom DeLuise movies. You didn't drive all the way to the heart of the evil empire to see how my diet's going. You came here to talk about the contact lenses, didn't you? I'm in a position to broker their sale. That's what I heard. Hey, hey, hey! Fat Albert will make him an offer he can't refuse! <laughs> yeah! Meanwhile, Charlie gets captured by the colonel and is subjected to a torture scene that's not quite as titillating as the opening scene. Where are the lenses? This guy has them. What guy? He's fat. Wears a red suit. White beard. Name's Kringle. <laughs> Chris Kringle. <laughs> 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 Put a search out on this Kringle guy. So Barb finds her Kentucky Fried brother as Axel and Cora D arrive on the scene. Charlie. Well, that just jingles my fat. But Barb, being the thoroughly unlikable character that she is, still wants to hand over the contacts to Mr. Fatso. Where unfortunately, the Colonel is there waiting. Not only do I get the lenses, but I get a million dollars bounty on your head, and a million dollars bounty on the head of the good doctors for turning you both over to the Congressional. <laughs> Don't you just love All right, plan Java, let's together? keep the close-ups to a minute. <laughs> but our cop friend slips Barb a grenade that these guards should clearly be able to see, and she uses it to escape. Look out, she's got a grenade! Oh, hey, hey, shit! Ah! So once Barb finds out she's not getting any money, her morals suddenly return, as we partake in a pretty standard chase scene. But the colonel gets the jump on her with a bulldozer. <laughs> a bulldozer! I drive the bulldozer! <laughs> I just saw the joke I saw on the monsters. <laughs> Stage and into the depressing stage. <laughs> oh, there's the manic again. <laughs> Is this the one that makes it go up and down? Yeah, yeah, it does. Which one makes it go around? This one, right here. What about this one? Uh, maybe I should use that brain thing my mama told me about. <laughs> Normally, I don't get emotional about my work, but vaporizing your springy ass is gonna be a real pleasure. You forgot. <laughs> so a crane being run by Axel actually picks up the car and bulldozer in what I have to admit is a pretty creative action sequence. <laughs> you know, Barb, sometimes you gotta take a step back and ask yourself, just how the hell did I get here? I got you, babe! Everyone, don't, don't call me, me babe! <gasps> <gasps> I'm falling! I'm falling! 
going? That's worth laughing over. <laughs> so the villain is destroyed as they try to get the doctor and the contact lenses to safety. And wouldn't you know it, it ends with them saying goodbye outside of a plane. You're gonna miss your plane. So I thought Bob Wire never took sides. Keep it to yourself. Here's ripping off you, kid. Where will you go? Well, I hear Paris is nice this time of year. Parish? This could be the end of a horrible movie. I do believe I'm falling in love. Get in line. Okay, I guess the movie shot itself before it could appropriately end. As well as should. This movie is horribly stupid. Its stunts are standard, its lines are boring, its acting is corny, and of course, it's fucking Casablanca! My recommendation? See fucking Casablanca! It's considered one of the greatest films of all time! I mean, what could this movie possibly have that Casablanca did it? Boobies! Tell your brother, your sister, and your mama too. We're about to go down. I'm the nostalgia critic guy, remember it? So you don't have to.